Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be talking about the new BTC Mining King for hardware. This is going to be not from the typical big hitters, right? This is not from Bitmain, this is not from What's Miner, but this new guy coming in is not only more powerful, it is also more efficient, right? It's pretty crazy that it's not from either of those two guys and we do have some technical details as to how they were able to do it, right? So pretty interesting stuff. Also going to touch on a good budget BTC mining option. It's this one that's been out, but recently there was a pretty good discovery. It makes it a, quite a bit more appealing, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned, all right? So let's get to it. Um, so let's go right to it, right? So this is from Desway Miner. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it from a lot of the other tubers content that they made from Mining Disrupt, right? So interesting things here, though, is there is a breakdown now of the unit itself, right? Somebody was actually able to purchase that first unit, and they did crack it open, and we did learn quite a few things, right? So pretty interesting stuff. We'll cover that here in a second. But in case you're unfamiliar, the two key models, a lot of us actually got introduced this guy. This guy was a meme on crypto Twitter for a while just because of this <laughs> unorthodox design, right? But these are the guys that are interesting, right? It's two models, they're both the K10, one's the Pro, one's the Ultra. Essentially the same stats, one is more efficient than the other, right? So the K10 Pro is coming in at 170 terahash, which the previous King hasn't even been released. It's the S19 JXP coming in at 151 terahash, which was only one terahash more than the What's Miner, right? They kind of did that just to be petty. This one is a significant upgrade, right? So it's 170 terahash. It does have a, like an overclock mode, to 200 terahash, right? So this cheaper guy though, at the 170 terahash mode, it's at 22.5 joules of terahash, which is very impressive, right? That's pretty much right under the XP. The XP is coming in at 21.5, right? Even more impressive though is the other guy, right? This guy's coming in at 20.5 joules of terahash, so beating the XP, right? So very, very interesting stuff, right? I mean, what's even more interesting is how they were able to do it. So this is a video. I'm not going to go into all of the details of the machine. I would highly recommend if you're into the details and technicals of it to watch this thing in its entirety. It does have a lot of info. Pretty cool stuff that they are doing, right? Aside from just the, the stats and the specs. But let's go over the key standouts for me. Number one, you can see it in this picture here, right? So number one, let me give credit to him. Bitcoin Mining Museum. I'll put a link in the description, watch the video, sub to him. Very interesting. So number one, you can see one crazy thing. Look at the amount of chips on this thing, right? 364 chips per board, 1,092 chips total, right? So super, super interesting. Seeing so many close together. The other interesting tidbit that came that I got up from it was the fact that it's the chips are actually on an older node, right? Currently the XP is on that five nanometer node. This is on an eight nanometer node. So pretty interesting that they were able to get such good efficiency. Why? Because essentially more chips on there, but a lot of them think of it as being as like underclocked. What have we learned with Bitmain and all of these low power modes, right? The lower you clock them, the better the efficiency gets, right? And they kind of piled on with this theory and just added a bunch more and they're all essentially like underclocked. And that's also why they're, that's going to be one of their things that they're touting is that it has better thermals essentially, right? And that's part of it on top of the fact that it actually does have better thermals, right? Recommend watch this video so you can see the breakdown and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, on top of some other cool things that they were doing in there, again, I'd highly recommend if you're into that kind of stuff. I love watching the technicals of it just to see what other companies are doing. Right, just to see things that I want to see. I want to see them innovate. I want to see competition. Again, this is the key thing. Even if it's kind of out of your price range or a little over, it's just seeing this innovation, right? Again, more competition is always good, especially when they innovate. They do something new, something different, right? The typical bit main thing is just get the latest and greatest chip, throw it on, keep going, right? Versus it's impressive that this is on an older node, yet they were able to beat them in efficiency and in power by doing so, right? So this does, you know, one of those things where innovation is always key, competition is always key. But again, highly recommend you watch that video. 
Um, so for price, he did kind of say for the K10 Pro, which is the lower model, I mean, essentially they're the same thing, just one's more efficient than the other. It's about $25 a terahash. So bringing in about $4,200, right? So we'll see. They haven't officially put the price there. That could be the MSRP, but the street price may be lower. Or if demand is there, maybe that's what it is. We'll see what production numbers look like, if this is going to be even really made available to the public, or if this is one of those things like Epic where it was made uh, available to the farms first. We'll see. But again, big takeaway is innovation and competition, right? Which is what we definitely, definitely need in the ASIC space, right? Always, always welcome. So pretty cool stuff there. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on, so shout out to Altair Tech right? They are a very good follow if you're into BTC mining or mining in general, right? A lot of good info. I've covered them in the past. So this is a good find from them. So for the S1990 Terahash model, turns out there's actually two variants, right? One of those variants is way better than the other, right? People have actually been able to get pretty much the equivalent of a S19J Pro, like the 104 model, right? So you can see here, they were able to overclock it, 104 terahash at about 3,200 watts, right? So about a hundred watt difference from that regular S19J Pro. But the key thing here, this guy is way cheaper, okay? You can find them new in the thousand to $1,100 range, sometimes even cheaper, right? But just keep in mind that you would have to overclock this, right? kind of was brought on by let's see on boss coin talk somebody mentioned uncorking right so it's essentially like flashing it with a different firmware specific to these models and they were able to get again similar performance this one's kind of a little more intriguing only because they're able to use factory firmware by doing this by reprogramming it essentially right so pretty cool, but again, it's not really gonna benefit you unless you have somebody local to your area who does have a programmer who can do this for you, right? Otherwise, the cost of having to get it from them, shipping it to them, doing the service, cutting it back, is probably not gonna be in your best interest versus just buying it and buying an Epic board, right? Or buying any of these boards where you're able to overclock, mess with it and such. Again, the reason I mentioned that Epic board is because of the fact that there are no dev fees, right? So again, that is also available from them. They do have a store. I will have a link in the description if you guys are interested. Um, they are one of the only vendors I've noticed going through, and I even emailed a couple of them just to kind of see what their reactions were, and they had no idea what I was talking about with the two different variants, right? So a lot of stores will have this 90 terahash model, anywhere from 900 to 1100 bucks. But if there's no guarantee as to which one you're going to get, you're going to end up wasting your money, right? Because you're not going to be able to do this with the 88 chip. It's the 126 chip model that you want to be able to do this, right? So keep that in mind. So also keep in mind that you're going to pay 1100 bucks for the unit and then add another 150 bucks for the control board, right? To be able to do this, right? So pretty cool stuff, though, that they were able to get it. And even just overclocking it to the factory settings was extremely efficient, right? It's rated at 90 terahash at, I believe, 3,200 watts. So even just in that factory mode, at that 90 terahash model, it's going to pay for itself, at least for that control board, probably within a matter of a few months, right? Just because you're going to save that 600 watts, right? Which is a pretty, pretty significant deal. But the appeal here is that you'd be able to get the performance of this guy for that price, right? So again, they do have it. Again, they do have... The two variants, right? So 999 is the 88, ter 88 chip model, and then 126 models 1099. So if that's why you're purchasing it, that would be the one you would want, right? So again, Altair Tech also does have these Epic boards. Um, oh, an interesting thing from Mining Disrupt, they did show off the What's Miner boards now. So those will be probably coming here pretty soon. So pretty cool stuff for you guys with the What's Miners, right? Going to be able to have the same control and no defi. Okay, be able to overclock, underclock. Pretty cool stuff. Um, one other thing that came out is from Pivotal, Pivotal Plebtech. Pretty interesting. They were able to come up with this. It's called their low key. Where is it at? Low key kit, right? Essentially making it so you can pretty much run 
a S19 or a T19 or other boards, but being able to run just a single board on 120 volts, right? So pretty interesting, not something I'd really do, but kind of cool if you have, you know, access to one, pretty much just being able to have the control board, this guy, and being able to plug it in, right? I know some of you guys can't do 240, Pretty interesting, right? Again, not something I'd really do. Maybe if I had a BTC miner and two of the boards died and I had one that was running, kind of cool, right? Interesting, more so than anything. You could see people here have been like messing around with it. You see a couple of pictures here where you could see the single board there, control board there, and they were able to use another power supply. And they have it all in a contained unit with just the blower on it, right? And this is all able to be done on 110, 120 volts. Right, so pretty cool. I mean, again, not something I'm really interested in, but it's just cool to know, right? Cool to see the little innovation, little things they're doing, right? Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Just wanted to keep you updated. Again, this guy, super interesting. Price is pretty high, though, right? We'll see what it looks like, um, at least for now, right? We'll see. I'm not sure what actual production numbers look like or when it's going to be readily available, right? We do have... I'm not even sure if you can currently buy it now. I'm sure they do have vendors. If you're looking into it, email them. You can look at vendors, see who distributes them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to me, price is a little high, again, especially compared to these cheap, cheap uh, BTC miners we currently have. Maybe a different story in a few months. We'll see where the price action goes. Um, but pretty cool to see just competition, right? We got to see this. We got to see the innovation we'll see what happens right because pretty much the only other thing we're looking forward to is jazz miners supposed to be releasing something towards the end of the year are they gonna do something similar like this but maybe well on a five nanometer node where it's a bunch it's more efficient who knows right we'll see what prices are looking like it's just it's hard also for these newer companies to come out just because like at miner and bitmain and what's miner a lot of them are so cheap right now right again if these guys were to come out Eight months from now when this debuted and the same models were there, it'd be more profitable for them, right? It's just right now, 4K is kind of high, although I'm probably going to change my tune in a year from now, and it's probably going to be crazy cheap offer. So it just depends on your mindset, depends on what you're doing, but uh, pretty innovative. Again, I recommend you guys watch that video, see what other features this one does have, right? Pretty cool stuff. Um, so let me know. Let me know if any of you guys are interested in buying any of those. Again, I will have links in the description for all Tech. I have purchased from them in the past. Cool dudes. I could recommend them. Fast shipping, right? I ordered a PSU from them. Thing was in my house in like two days, right? So pretty cool. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. And I am out.